So and his law. Uh, right. Christ. And like I said, everyone can get this gift, can get this refreshing. So let's let's get this new refreshing, this new wine in us, Steve, shall we? Yes, we shall. So I'm going to say a prayer, and you guys can repeat this after me. You, you don't have to say it out loud. It's not one of those things where I'm trying to hear what you're saying to make sure you're – no, you don't have to say it out loud. You can say it right straight in your head, and God can still hear you because God can – God God knows what, you, what goes on in your head and the things that you say. The devil does not, but God does. The devil can't read your mind, but, but God can. But I'm going to add to it. Go ahead. I'm going to add – you can say it in your head. You can say it in your mind with your soul and everything else. And God can still hear you, but God loves when, when God loves a brother or sister who comes back to him, or even oh, yeah. not, confesses out of his mouth. Oh yeah, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth, he is faithful freely. to forgive us. Yes, if you confess with your mouth freely, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And what else he does too is that then you're you're justified. Now your reward is in besides heaven even greater. Right. So let's pray real quick. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that we are here gathering together with you, Lord, that we are having supper with you, Lord, that we are learning about your word, about this new wine that we, Lord, can have. Not just us Christians, but as a body of believers and unbelievers, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are refilling us with this new wine, Lord. I say, Lord, I repent of everything that's knowing, Lord, and unknowing. We repent of everything, Lord, that we know about and do not know about, Lord. And yes, Lord, you are talking about unforgiveness. There are things in our lives, Lord, that we, people that we need to forgive and situations that we need to forgive that have happened to us. Because, Lord, these things, as Bishop said, had to happen so we can be where we're at today. You can't. See the light at the end of a tunnel, Lord, if you don't go through something. If you don't go through something, Lord, then you're perfect. It's like, it's like going to the doctors, Lord, and not needing a doctor. So let's pray. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of everything that I have done, knowing and unknowing, Lord. I ask you to uh, forgive me, Lord. I repent of everything that I have done and the things I do not know I have done. I thank you, Lord, that you have died on the cross so that we can be free and have this refreshing anointing of you, of the Spirit, this new wine, Lord. I ask you to invoke us with this new wine, to pour the new wine all over our heads so it pours down to our feet, Lord, so that we can be baptized in your Spirit, not just by water, but by fire, so that when we speak with the devil, we spit flames of fire from you, Lord, that that devil has to back away from us because our tongues no longer speak evil, but speak life. The Bible says the tongue has the power to create life and death, and we choose to speak life with our tongues. We thank you, Lord, that you have died for us and that we are free from all this. We can have that refreshing of new wine in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering on this note. Thank you, Jesus, that we are refreshed in you, Lord, that we are refreshed in you with this new wine, this new spirit of you. To finish up my comments for just a minute, then we can talk about this even further. As the Bible, well, where are we at now? And, okay. Uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. The Bible says in Mark Two, first off, we refill us with the new wine, his spirit. As the Bible says in Mark 2.22, And no man puts new wine in old wineskins, because it will taint and spill the new wine. Right. And, it makes it sour. Right. And it's in, plus it's vinegar. Good. Right. And in this day and age, Steve, we need new wine. We need his new yes. spirit. To be refreshed, because how can we, Steve? How can we be witnesses to of Christ if we have old wine in us? How can we? Let me ask you a question. You had a gallon of milk sitting in that ice box for three months. Are you going to drink that anymore? Well, it's ice cold, I am. Three months. Yeah, because wine stays wine stays stays cold for a long time, no, I even if. Temperature. I said, I said milk. But I know what you're saying, you know. 
Would you we'll drink, say... Would you drink... We'll say... Is, go ahead. Well, that's a good example, too. They'll we'll say, if you have wine, it's sat for many, many years. And even homemade wine, and it turns to what? It turns to vinegar. Right. And vinegar, if you were to drink vinegar, you can't really... I mean, pure. You can't really hold it up because you throw it up. Right. It's it's like milk. If you if you if you have milk sitting in the icebox for three months flat, you ain't gonna drink that milk no more because that milk's gonna be curdled and spoiled and it's gonna start smelling. Oh it's, yeah. It's it's like how can we how can we be uh, witnesses of Christ if we don't have new wine in us? How's that how's that old wine God's gonna pour that new wine into into us and the next thing you know it's gonna burst at the seams, it's gonna spill and taint the new wine, and then the Witnessing that we're trying to do is not going to be effective because that new wine is not in us and we are still dwelling in the old wine, the old past. And that's what the Bible says is we need to get rid of that because we can't be witnesses, Steve, if we don't get rid of the past. Right. See, see, the old, the old wine turns to sour and new wine turns to sweet. Right. The Bible says the old wine turns to turns to sour grapes. Yes, it does. And have you ever have you ever tasted a sour grape? Oh yes. Have you oh, ever turned around, and drank, uh, drank some real something real nasty or something? What happens? You start. Don't be wrong. You start vomiting. Yeah, I know. From the air, like a gas reflex, and it burns and it burns. But the fresh wine, it's a it's a blessing. It tastes sweet and it's good for the blood. You don't you take it properly, you know, properly, you know. Right. And it says in, in this, in, as the Bible says in Romans 12, verse 2, it says, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. There's that word renewing again. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our So God wants us to be renewed. He wants us to get rid of that junk that we dealt with before and come with a new, fresh anointing, a new, fresh wine in us. Because like you said, that new, fresh wine tastes real sweet. It tastes delicious. And it's one of those things that, if you ever drink fresh wine, it's one of those things, Steve, that you can just lounge on the couch and watch a movie, just sip that thing for hours and enjoy it. But when it turns sour, you you just set that thing to the side. You never want to even want to touch that thing. Can you, imagine, can you imagine being at that wedding where Jesus Christ was and they served old wine? Oh, I know. I mean, really old, man. Can you imagine everybody be puking? <laughs> oh, I know. If he would have served the same thing that they served, and I'm glad you got into that point because I'm going to say something else about that as well. Can you imagine serving the same thing they had before? They'd be sick because it's old and it's what they had already. And remember... And remember, the host of the wedding said, and you served, and you saved the best for last. Well, I I remember uh, drinking some old wine as a little kid. <laughs> so they say, so uh, the host said, you saved the new wine for last. Because he, the, he says, he says, we already drank the good stuff. And while we're drunk, we served the, uh, the watered down version. And then they think they're still getting drunk when they're not because it's watered down. He says, but you saved the best for last because that's why, because Jesus in that message there gave a parable of giving them new, fresh anointing, new, fresh wine. That's not just a miracle, I think, but that's also, I think, what Jesus was trying to get at was, it was a parable about, or a story about new, fresh anointing as well because that's what happens Hello, Aunt Chrissy. When you get that new wine, like in those vats, it was fresh and it's new and it's fresh new anointing. And God can deal and do with us what he wants us to do for him with that new fresh wine. Because like I said, we can't do anything if it's old. If it's stale, it ain't going to go nowhere. We ain't going nowhere if that wine is stale. Would you put stale crackers in your uh, chili? No, I wouldn't. No. I mean, stale stale chips even taste bad. So everything stale tastes bad. So if we are stale, does that mean that God, that the, the word that we speak of God, does that start tasting bad? Absolutely. Because it is stale in us. We got the old God. 
We it's it's like uh, like the Bible says. Who is he talking to? He was talking to one of the disciples on the road, and uh, he was blinded. Remember, remember, he was blinded, Steve. So you're trying to say that we are stagnated, right? But what does the word stagnate? Stagnate means that you're in a rut. You're stuck in the same place you you always been. You're always doing and getting what you always got because you've done the same thing over and over and over again. It's it's right. like. It's like going fishing. Here's a good example. Going fishing. You go fishing in a pond. Would you rather go fishing in a pond or would you rather go fishing in uh, a swamp? Wow. That's a good question. Why would you put it this way? Why would you want to go fishing in a pond? Because a pond is fresh, clean water and a swamp is dirty. What and else? And you do not know what you get out of that swamp. That's why you don't go fishing in a swamp. Well, it's, yeah, because you don't know there's evil around the swamp. And it's stagnant. Yeah, plus it's alligators. Right. But, so, like I was God saying... God gave you good, not stupid. <laughs> right. Like I was saying, we stay in the, in, the, in the stagnant or in the old wine. It's like there was a guy that was one of his disciples before it was... Just before he became a disciple, I think it was, he was on the road somewhere, and God blinded him, and he says, Lord, is that you? He goes, why do you crucify me all over again? He says, Lord, is that you? He goes, go to wherever that place was, and he goes, go see that prophet, and that prophet will anoint your eyes, and you'll see again. But the first thing you God's... About, about, uh, Apostle Paul. Yeah, Apostle Paul, that's who it is. He went to go see that uh, the preacher guy. Not the preacher guy, but the, the prophet. But God said, hey, why, do you, why do you crucify me again? If we stay in the old stagnant wine and we, keep, and we keep hanging God on that cross, hanging God on that cross, hanging God on that cross, eventually God, when we get to be with him, he's going to say, I'm done with you. You get thou behind me, you work of iniquity. I do not know you. You should see how many times you hung me back on that cross again. How many times you so crucified him? So it's another time, like sometimes, like we're walking in, uh, put this way, you could walk in religion too. Oh, yeah. And I hate to say this, but people, and this is, this is, this is actually a funny story to a degree. But you can use the Bible as a religion, or you can you can also use the Bible as religion or a a medium of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for of black magic. It's called Bibromancy. You ever heard of Bibromancy? Right. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. What does the Bible, what does the Bible mean to you? Basic basic instructions before leaving Earth. Okay, it's, what else? It's your roadmap that God's telling you this is the things you need to do and these are the things you need to stay away from and that's how you're going to live your life and you'll go to heaven with me. Right, what else? Take it a step further. It's a book of what? Of rules. Yeah. What it's did you get to out of the end? All the rules. Give me a hint. I know you, you go, get... You go to heaven. Yeah, and once you get in heaven, you get what? A book of what? Book of life. Right, you get the book of life. Right, that's what the Bible is. The book of life. Absolutely. But as I was trying to say, and a, a buddy of mine, Tom, you know Tom Evans, right? Remember him? He was a cool guy. Yeah. I used to love yeah, I remember. Him, Brother Tom. And uh, he said to me, he says, Andrew, he says, you can use the Bible as, as in, in a way of doing magic. Because the devil can use anything he wants to to get you to do something. And he gave an example, and don't get me wrong. This is this is funny. I'm gonna use my laugh track anyways. Yeah, I remember, is, I didn't say that. I'll let you finish it. Go ahead. But this is kind of funny, but he had a friend of his and he said, Here's a perfect example, Andrew. He goes, A buddy of his said that uh he don't know why, but he's always getting into trouble. And so Tom told me, he says, Well, one way to get and stay out of trouble is to read the Bible, read God's word. When you put your nose into God's word, you stay out of trouble. But a couple of days later, he goes, he comes back, he says, I do not like reading the Bible. He goes, what? 
And this is where I say the devil can use anything to get you to uh, 